track, deep in the forest. Fresh shavings there. photos of at least four reds I haven't been able to go through them close enough I'm not sure if there's a stag or a spiker in there definitely look different from the other group I saw the other day so that's such good sign for this area the only thing is they come through at night so they're transiting through here or coming to get a drink and that's about it so I'm gonna have to do a bit more recon in this area to work out where they're actually moving through whether it's this creek system or whether they're going up and across over there, back to the private. But that's so cool to get them on my cameras now, so you know they're in this area and there's no fallow, funnily enough. So, interesting one, the fallow I saw just over that ridge over there. There's no fallow on the camera, so maybe I pushed them out the other week and the reds came in, who knows. Oh, if this camera's got reds on it, can't wait to go get the other camera. Sambody, you're hunting in some hard country. Not only do you have to be fit enough to get in, stalk quietly enough without dragging your feet around, you also have to be able to, then if you successfully shoot something, to harvest it. I've heard stories of people shooting their first samba, but they're only able to harvest half of it they were unable to take the other half or the front legs or go back for a second walk. I think it's our duty as hunters if we do choose to take a life 
that you're going to use as much of it as possible. Otherwise, you're just shooting stuff for no reason. But then it also falls on us to know our own limits. Just because you can shoot something doesn't mean you should, nece you should necessarily shoot it. And I guess that's all dependent upon if we're trophy hunters or meat hunters. I'm personally a meat hunter first. If a trophy comes along, I'll take that. So, something to think about, guys. I know 90% of us are good. Lose that short few that don't take all the animals. I know I'm definitely feeling it walking through here. And I am a bit unfit. So, you pose with that dilemma. Not after you shoot the animal, but before you shoot it. Alright, let's get back up to camp. Pick up my old man and go for a walk to see the other camera. find these boundaries for next year and hopefully work this section.
picked up this other game camera. But something which I knew from last time as well is that there's going to be a very hard area to hunt. Getting in to the position of where I want to be whilst not crashing through the bush and the thicket and the fern is another thing. If you know there's an area you want to hunt, it might be perfect area but if you can't get there silently and quiet the deer the animals the game whatever you're targeting they're gonna know you're there so as you can see from the shit I'm walking through here animals are gonna hear me from a mile away so oh, something I will have to work on in this spot this weekend I was just getting the cameras, but is to find access routes for morning and afternoon. I haven't gone through all the photos yet, but once again it was of a night they were going through, so there were 300 photos on that camera as well. But if it's an afternoon they're heading through, it's probably good because I can get there early just after lunch and sit and wait. If it's a morning, it might be another story. So I'm just heading out now. It's going to be an interesting drive out with all the rain. Um, I'll put some footage together of these trail cam picks. Who needs to train with pack weights when you have kids? The aftermath of driving to places you shouldn't drive because you know there's deer there. The winch got pretty hot. We had the winch out of this spot a couple weekends ago. It rained all night and a little bit nervous about getting out. And surely enough, we winched on the first hill, not even this one. And then we had the winch. That's still about. Max tracks resets to get up here. Lucky we left early tonight. 